Let's talk about data blocks. I want to go through some of the different data blocks that are available to us uh, when programming conversationally in the control. But first I want to talk about what is a data block. In conversational programming, if you look at a pro uh, part that you're getting ready to program, every feature on that part will be represented by a data block. That data block might be a mill contour, such as the one highlighted here on the screen, which will be made up of many lines and arcs. Could be several sub-blocks deep. Nonetheless, that contour is one feature. A group of holes would be one block, represented by multiple processes and locations. Still one block. On the program review screen here, we see that these blocks are laid out like chapters in a book. And if you were to highlight each one of those chapters, the sub-blocks would become separate pages within that chapter. So we can think of the program review screen as a table of contents in a book. The table of contents displays all of the different chapters. Each chapter has pages that make up that chapter. And that's kind of how we look at uh, data blocks and the um, program review screen on the control. Some of the data blocks that we have, or menus of data blocks that we have available. First of all, we have the position block. This is a very useful block, especially at the end of a program, to bring the table forward for the operator to change out parts. Nothing that we'll be using in class, but please keep in mind that this is a very useful block and you'll use this quite often in programming. Anytime you need to move the table to a specific location for, again, part changeover, flipping a part over from side A to side B, so on. The next three we have here represented in blue, these are menus that we will be using in class programs. Everything hole related, center drilling, drilling, tapping, boring, reaming, and so forth will be under the holes menu. Everything milling related will be underneath the milling menu. And then whenever we create geometry in the Herco control, we can pattern that in many different ways. And obviously we would do that under the pattern menu. Another very commonly used uh, menu, set of menus, is the miscellaneous menus. Some things under there might be change part setup, meaning if I have more than one part on a table, or if I want to flip the part over in mid-program, then I would use a change part setup, very much like G54 through G59 is used in NC or G-code programming. Every program has its own set of parameters. Those are global parameters that follow the program from beginning to end. There are specific instances when I want to change those parameters or change a portion of those parameters to work specifically for one or two blocks. In a case like that, I would insert a change parameters block into the program, and that's found under the miscellaneous functions. Also machine functions. Maybe I have um, an M52 that I'm using to um, control some hydraulic or pneumatic clamping and I need to uh, fire that M code then to clamp or unclamp my, my fixturing. I could input uh, M codes in the program also under miscellaneous. Some of the other ones there are for specific reasons in uh, many of our uh, options such as NC programming, uh, sub calls, as well as rotary programming. Here we see an example of the position data block that I spoke of. Um, we have a few options here. We can give an XY location for the table to rapid to. And then we have the option of having it stop when it gets to that position, requiring a cycle start to continue on. We also see a field here called index pulses. When we're using an indexer, uh, not a, a full fourth axis rotary, but a positional indexer, then it will have its own, con its own control unit that's programmable. The operator would pro program that unit to do whatever it needs to do for the part he's running. And then we activate this by giving it an index pulse. If we say one index pulse, then the control is telling that, that indexer to do its program one time. The Herco will wait until it's finished. When it receives confirmation, it will then continue on. If we were to put a number two in index pulses, it were telling that control of the indexer unit, do your program or execute your program twice. Once it's done, it will report back to the Herco that it's finished. We will carry on. So there's a couple uses for the data block position. Next we have hole operations. Again, I said under the holes operations, we'll do anything hole oriented, drilling, tapping, boring, reaming, back spot face, back bore, things like that. 
We're going to use uh, this data block in many of the programs in class, so we'll see lots of examples of this going forward. We have million operations. We can do simple geometry such as mill circles, frames, faces, and ellipses, but we can also do arbitrary shapes using lines and arcs. There's a few things like 3D mold, swept surface, some of the other uh, things that we're going to see coming up here that are options that we won't be using in class. But this is just to give you an idea of what some of the milling operations are that we can do uh, from these simple menus. Here's a slot, polygon, some lettering blocks, and so forth. Thread milling operation here, as well as a serialization. Uh, we have a lot of call for people who need to serialize parts, incrementing one or more numbers every time the program is executed, and we have that as available as a conversational block as well. We spoke that any time that you can do geometry in the control, we can then pattern it. Here is an example of some of the patterns we have. In this data block here, or this menu here, we have looping patterns. We can loop rectangular, loop linear, loop angular, rotate. We can also do pattern locations. Pattern locations would be uh, almost like miniature part setups. I can write the program once, using pattern locations and put that program in multiple places on the table. Where pattern locations differs from other types of patterning is I don't have to have everyone a specific amount or a specific distance apart. In the case of a loop linear for example I give it a distance between the number of repeats and the distance between those. They all are exactly the same. If I have two vices on the table then, or three vices on the table, I, those aren't exactly the same distance apart. I need to have some independent control between where those are located, and I can use pattern locations for that. We also see scale and pattern, or in mirror image. Here we're going to see some graphic examples of what these different patterns look like. Here's a loop rectangular. Basically, we're telling it how many rows and columns in the x and the y axis and how far apart are they in each individual axis. Loop linear, how many repeats of this particular feature and how far apart are they in the x and y axes. Again, a specific exact dimension between each one. Loop angular, you're going to program the feature in location and then rotate it around a center point. Notice that the orientation of x and y does not change using loop angular the part never changes orientation. Here's a loop rotate, very much like loop angular, however in this case the X and Y look, um, shape of the part does rotate with the pattern. Notice that it, the, uh, the orientation of the part also rotates as it spins around that center point. Here's the pattern locations I spoke of. We would program a, pro a part we would run one of them at the original location of 000. Then we will have, in this case, two other parts that are a, a distance apart from there. Let's say we ran the first set of parts and the second part was a few thousandths out of location. I can then change that six inches to plus or minus a couple thou to be able to adjust that very much, again, like a part setup. We also have the ability to raise and lower the part for the times when we may not have the exact same height of vice, maybe we're using different parallels, or whatever the reason may be. Here's an example of the scale pattern block. We're going to give it a reference position from zero to scale about, and then we have the x, y, and z scale factor. I will make one note <clears throat> that when programming and using a scale is it to be intended, you probably want to program from the center of the part it makes scaling much much easier but it is doable if you program from a corner as well as you see here in the example here's a mirror image the first question do you want to keep the original I could program a right hand then by putting in a mirror image cut a left hand for example and in that instance I may not want to keep the original program um, if I answer yes it will cut both features the X and Y location is the location of where the mirrored line indicated in red here on the screen would be located from zero. And the angles, what angle 
is the orientation of that red line or basically of the mirror. If I have it in 90 degrees as I see here, I'm going to mirror image about the x-axis. If I had it at 0 or 180 degrees, I would then be mirroring around the y-axis and that green and yellow would be a, one would be above the other. We spoke about miscellaneous functions and here are what menus lie beneath that miscellaneous functions button. We had graphics on and off, very helpful, especially in multi-sided programming. Once I have one side complete, I begin to program the second side. The geometry from the top side might be interfering and making things look a little cluttered. I can turn off the graphics and then turn them back on when I choose to. This does not affect the function of the machine. It only represents turning them off on graphics. Uh, change parameters, change parts setup, we talked about that, being able to insert those in the program and machine function. Uh, if you have a probe on your machine, you could probe for part setup automatically. Uh, for example, you might have a burnout on the table and every time you change that part out, the, the average center of that burnout may change, so every part you might want to probe and you might want to do that automatically, so you put that in as part of the program. Some other things, um, a comment cycle, being able to put a comment that, uh, that will then appear on the screen and you do have the option of stopping at that point. For example, I have a position block to move the table out to the operator. Then I can, can execute a comment block that would stop the motion and put in a message on the machine that says flip part over forward or what have you. So I can give some information to the operator to be able to orient that part then. Uh, tool monitoring and part inspection, that gives me the ability to be able to uh, check parts and monitor tools in cycle. And we have now the ability to optimize for tool changes to once we get one tool on the spindle, we can do everything possible with that tool before we make it a tool change. We no longer have to really program around that.